Hello family, Kurt Bragg here, Elder Family of Faith. Um, coming to you th with this week's Reflect, and so uh, it's been a couple weeks, and I uh, wanted to um, get back and, and uh, start uh, giving you some more content here. And uh, once again, uh, like, share, um, submit your questions. I really like to hear from, from you all on some things that you are uh, interested in knowing about concerning the message. And once again, we're doing this uh, um, upon Sunday's message, uh, the Sunday before uh, the Wednesday that this goes out. So, um, so anyway, this week and even last week, it was uh, talked about um, Pastor Jeff, Pastor Sway, um, centered their, rest, their message around uh, abundance in the time of famine. So. Um, even though Pastor Jeff's message was a little bit different, it still focused on uh, a lot of that same content. And so I wanted to, because because it is uh, very similar in nature between the two Sundays, I wanted to uh, dive in here and try to try to give uh, a, a, my perspective and maybe some questions that I have as I um, heard those messages and kind of my dialogue with the Lord about those answers and so forth. So. Um, some of the things that uh, most recent that uh, Pastor Sway brought up on Sunday was about, you know, how, how um, you know, we're not supposed to serve two masters and uh, we either serve God or money. And how that doesn't necessarily mean that money's bad. And we, we know that, that money isn't necessarily bad in itself. Uh, money money can, can be used for good. It can be used for bad. But... Um, but the love of money, you know, the, the, when we put money in front of God, and uh, that's where it becomes uh, a problem. But um, we need to understand the economics of heaven and what God really wants us to do uh, with the resources that He's given us. And, you know, when you put it like that, when you talk about resources... We have many resources at our disposal that God's given us, God-given talent, um, you know, uh, obviously our money, um, you know, our, the other things that the, the intuitiveness for, for what we do for a living, the, the, um, the types of, of uh, occupations that we hold and, and how um, we can have strategic um, insight to complete our, our daily task from even from God, strategic insight from God to complete our daily task with, and uh, um, so those things you know those types of resources God gives us and blesses us with and we need to recognize that and we need to um, we need to give God all the glory for that. But money is just one tool. It's just one of those tools. And um, but it's a, it's a mistaken tool, especially in the body of Christ. It's a tool that uh, most of the time uh, is not used properly and then oftentimes not used at all, uh, at least in a manner by which it should be in, um, in, in the body of Christ. And what do I mean by that? Well, um, you know, we've got, there's different segments of people, not just denominations, not just uh, our church or another church, but within the church, there's different segments of people that believe a different, that even believe a different way and, and uh, operate by, the, by those beliefs. And um, while we have to get our own revelation on that, it is, you know, the church's responsibility, Pastor Sway, Pastor Jeff, all the pastors, the elders, it's those, it, it is our responsibility to do our best to relay how we are supposed to use our resources in a godly manner and by which, uh, and, and, you know, obviously giving him all the praise and glory and yet being effective and on the cutting edge of, uh, uh, of doing, of, of what kingdom wants us to do, what God wants us to do in the kingdom, I should say. And so, um, with, with that said, there's many different, this is a, a, 
a great passion of mine, and I think mainly because uh, of its misunderstood uh, uh, base and how uh, many people don't understand uh, the depths of what God wants to do in their life financially. And a lot of times we'll cut, we'll, we'll stop short of uh, where God wants us to go. And, um, and so, you know, uh, Pastor Sway talked about um, uh, tithing, giving of offerings, um, the, uh, the devourer being rebuked on our behalf, which is part of the blessing. Um, Pastor Jeff mentioned that too and, and brought up about uh, how we can recognize when the devourer has been, uh, ha- has been rebuked for our, on our behalf or some other types of, of uh, victory within our finances that doesn't really constitute uh, maybe an extra check or extra money on our, on our, uh, from the salary from our, from our occupation, but yet it was a huge savings or a, um, some type of favor that we ended up with financially that we're able to, to do more with the resources that we've been given. And that's, that's a huge thing to recognize because especially somebody that may be new to giving, um, maybe you're, maybe you're new at offerings, maybe you're, um, Maybe uh, God's taken you to another level and you're navigating through that. And so it's very important for us to recognize all of the blessings that come with uh, not only financial prosperity, but giving to the Lord, uh, reaping and sowing, and and how um, we need to to be cognizant of those um, gifts and blessings, um, you know, and, and how we need to be uh, on how we need to be proactive in our giving, in our, um, in our thought process towards giving. And so um, one of the things that I think that we can do a better job at, and I, I, the Lord, I've seen some ebbs and flows in my life where the Lord just really kept me hyper-focused on some of these things. Um, and that's, you know, not only uh, where the devourer's been rebuked, but um, opportunities to give and looking for those opportunities and you know uh, you know whether it's blessing somebody in the line behind us as mentioned whether it's you know buying somebody's uh, meal in, in uh, you know in a restaurant um, uh, I, I like to do it I, I do those kind of things and I like to do it as covert as I can and uh, if I can uh, you know I, I love being able to 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 buy something for somebody, to pay for something, to pay a bill, to, without them ever knowing about it. And uh, uh, while that you know, may sound like something that uh, is good to do, there's other times that the God's checked me that this person needs to know that you're giving it to them. And so because you love them, because you want to bless them or whatever, and uh, I've, I can think of a few instances, and, and uh, uh, I, I, one of the key components to this, and there's the reason why I didn't go into detail right there, was that I, I like, I always check myself when, I, when I'm uh, talking about the way or who or how I'm giving. And I do think it's a godly principle to, um, to be very... Uh, cautious on how we navigate through um, blessing somebody or, or being a blessing to somebody, uh, paying for their meal, whatever. It's not that, it's not that uh, we're not giving God all the glory, but we also want to be careful that we're not maybe putting that person in a situation that they may feel uncomfortable, whoever we're giving to. And so that's that's something that we have to have to uh, bear in mind that we don't you know make them look in a, in a manner by which it may uh, they may feel uncomfortable. Um, but I can remember an instance where I got uh, blessed, that, and it was it was very unique. It was very much similar to some of the things that Jeff brought up and some of the things that Pastor brought up, and that's why I felt it was important that I share. Uh, one particular occupation I worked at, I was uh, uh, I did maintenance for a doctor, 
and I took care of several of his homes and businesses, and, and I did that for several years, and he was a good Christian man. And the Lord would use him when I was in, in need. He would, he would come to me and say, hey, what's going on? And, uh, you, know, I, I, you know, are you needing money? At, at a time when I was, and I wouldn't, I, I'm very, you know, private in that manner. I wouldn't, I really wasn't bringing it up or making it known. Um, and, uh, and, and, he, and the Lord would use him to uh, basically dig out of me what I needed and, and get that money to me. But, uh, and, and uh, you know, he blessed me many, many times with, you know, extra checks, not part of anything that was that would quote be a bonus or a, anything that was actually due me um, and uh, but he would always say this one thing he would say you don't have to worry about tithing on this because I already did well I still tithe on it. I said well, that's not how it works so my question is is if somebody come up and 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 gave you a gift how would you and they said I've already tithed on that, so you don't have to. How would you uh, look at that? You know, um, what what's your stance on that? I think that stance is a position of heart by which we're not doing it because we're not tithing, we're not giving offerings, we're not giving somebody because we have to, or because it's some sort of obligation that that the Lord's required. So once He got His money from one place, He doesn't need to get it from here. That that's not the way it works. And so, um, uh, while I didn't, you know, uh, while the Lord was using him and he had his own position on, on tithing, and he tithed, but I'm not sure he even grasped, and, and he was very blessed financially because he was a giver, but I'm not sure he grasped the full uh, embodiment of what God wants to do financially in people's lives. Uh, if he did, he would say, instead of saying, you don't have to tithe on that, I already did, he would say, make sure you tithe on this. <laughs> so that, that, that's really uh, the importance of uh, having a right understanding about God's Word and not just taking somebody's word for it, you know? And, uh, and knowing that, you know, I don't tithe because I get blessed. I tithe because... God is my God, and then He blesses me. And uh, and so we need to we need to understand that type of economics of God because the the, the way that God will then turn around and do the things that I mentioned and seek you out when you need help and and bring to you what you need. You know, I, I always say that I like it when people tell me what they're not going to do for me ahead of time. Because God turns every one of those situations around and does exactly that. In this particular instance, I was mentioning about my employer. He also told me when I first started there, he said, listen, there's not going to be any overtime. And um, you're probably not going to get any raises for a good while. It's probably be a year or more. And uh, um, there was even a couple other things. But those two in particular, uh, you know, he's... He, very cordial. He's just being upfront about it. You know, this job, does, it's not the way it goes. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's maintenance and you're going to get paid X, Y, Z. And, uh, you know, you'll get, you'll get your annual raises, but don't expect something before that. And uh, don't expect overtime. I wasn't there a week and he said I could work all the overtime I wanted. And he gave me a raise. And so I've seen this happen on numerous occasions where God and, and my question that I want to propose to, uh, to you all, to this audience, is what are you saying when your boss gives you limits? Because a lot, of, a lot of this is about what we say and what we do with what's been told us. You know, how are we digesting that information when it says, guess what, we're cutting out all overtime and you're not getting any more. And uh, by the way, we're probably going to be laying off some employees coming up. Is your next thought, maybe I better be looking for a job and you've not been called to go somewhere else? We, that's the type of thing that we can get caught up in the world's economy 
and we can get caught up in this whole uh, the way that the world works and God's wanting to do something different. Maybe, maybe he's, maybe you're going to be the one that he keeps, and they're 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 able to give you a raise because, you know, they don't have these other these other people, and they're you know they've seen value in you, and uh, you're gonna you're gonna get the increase, and so um, uh, that is clearly in direct relationship to what Pastor Sway shared because um, in the time of a famine. When we're, when God's giving us the abundance, what are we doing with that abundance, and how are we navigating through when people are going are saying there's not going to be enough for you, so you better do this. You, we better ha- have a check about what God wants us to do. What direction does God want us to go? It may be the exact opposite direction by which everybody else is flowing and going to, and so, um, so when somebody tells you you're not going to get or we're going to cut this off or or to me that's a look out god's about to do something i don't know what it is for you maybe you haven't maybe that's not been to your experience but have you played that out have you kept your mouth on godly things during that time have you went or did you go to to your uh, neighboring employee and uh, and your your coworker and say guess what they're cutting out all overtime maybe we ought to look for a job what's your stance another position I was in um, uh, very similar to what I'm describing here is um, the business was shutting down and they were they, it was going under but I knew I wasn't supposed to leave yet so uh, I wasn't let go. Um, I was told to go look for jobs, which I didn't do, um, that we're closing down. And um, during that time, all the other employees left. There were me and a son-in-law, and that was all that was left, two people. And uh, the, and the business was under. The, the IRS was going to shut the doors. It was closing it down. And there were just weeks left. And I, I still was was had peace about staying there i was going to do something when that time was up but right then wasn't it and once again two weeks i the employer to which i'm working currently contacted me during that time and i didn't it my point with this is is that the lord sought me out I was sought out for another position and and been blessed there also right during the time when it looked like everything was coming to a crash. And so um so I you know I think a lot of it has to do with our attitude, with our placement of our heart and with what we say. And so during this during a time when we're when the Lord's given us abundance, what are we doing with that abundance? And what are we doing with our mouth? And then, what's our also what's our conversation? You know, when I say what we're doing with our mouth, but that goes with a conversation that we might be having with with others that don't know the Lord, and um, about how to be uh, how, how God's using you through this this situation. So, um, you know, we need to seek out things uh, opportunities to give whether it be uh, offerings or, or blessing somebody, paying off bills. We need to be that. That's what I want to be. I want to write the checks to pay the house without anybody knowing about it. And uh, I want to I wanna write, the, write the checks to pay somebody's salary without anybody knowing about it. I want to write the checks to, to uh, buy the car that nobody knows about. And so, um, you know... And then, you know, what's our position on, you know, your employment, what God's doing with you there, and how are you using that um, to glorify God in a time when everybody else is turning away? And so that you can be that voice piece uh, to those that don't know the Lord and how God works. And so 
the law of sowing and reaping works, people. I, I just want you to know that God will bless you. He will uh, move you up. He will um, protect you. He will watch over you. He will guide you. Um, but we need to we need to have a plan for what we're going to do. What you're going to do when uh, you have that situation where you have that abundance, and we need to be proactive with what God wants us to do, and not be thinking that it's better if I'm poor. You know that I can that uh, I'm more humble if I'm poor. That's a kind of a common thing that uh, some Christians' attitude takes. Um, you know, and and uh, and it's really a mixed up uh, idea of what God wants to do. And sometimes we're not always. I want to make sure I bring this. Sometimes we're not always as resourceful when God gives us abundance, and so we're, maybe maybe we do lack in stewardship sometimes, and we we need to seek out good stewardship. But you know what? God is still faithful to see us through. He's not going to. Uh, I've had many bad financial decisions that I've made, and God's seen me through them. But the key is is to keep putting Him in front, and He'll see you through that, and He'll direct your path, and He'll change your idea of what that looks like, and, and working out of a, a godly uh, kingdom type of economics versus a poverty type of economics. So thanks so much. Hope you enjoyed. And... Uh, once again, if you have any questions, submit them to Reflect, and we'll uh, try, to, try to answer them. God bless.